The simple dry style curry of dindura, which are ivy gourd and sweet corn, is light, fresh and quick to prepare. Serve this weeknight vegetable dish with roti, fulka, paratha or rice. If you can't find tindura, then try it with courgette cut to the same size. Tindura and sweet corn shak. Hey guys, I am back with a brand new recipe this week and this is a home style comfort curry, which we call shak. Uh, because I grew up in a Gujarati speaking home uh, but you might also know it as a sabji um, or simply a curry and it is very very easy to make. So you know when you go to an Indian shop and see like the vast array of vegetables on offer and you think to yourself I kind of recognize that but I'm not going to buy it because I'm not quite sure how I prepare it. Well, I'm going to debunk one of those vegetables for you today and it is going to be dindora. And there are dozens of ways that you can prepare this vegetable, but this is my favourite. It's a simple homestyle curry that we like to serve uh, just with simple rutli at home um, and very little else. You can have it with chas if you like. Um, and when I was little, we used to call these snozcombers because they reminded us of uh, the BFG's favourite food in that classic Roald Dahl book. Um, and if you've read those books, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Except these aren't like big and gross and full of like yellowish liquid. They are absolutely delicious and tiny and so, so yummy. Lots of you have been requesting some everyday curries that you can share with your families. And this is one of my favorites. It has some sweet corn in there, uh, which I use uh, from a tin. Uh, you can use fresh, you can use frozen. It's really, really versatile. Just use whatever you have. Um, and if you can't find dindora, then don't worry, you can still make this. Just uh, cut pieces of zucchini uh, courgette to the same size and uh, you'll be on your way to a fabulous weeknight curry that you'll enjoy again and again. I promise this is on our menu so, so often at home and I really love it. So I hope you do too. Tap the link in the description box for a handy recipe card. Okay, so one thing I tend to hear a lot of the time is that people stay away from preparing the Indian vegetables they see in the shops because they don't know how to prepare them. Well guys, don't worry because I've got your back. What we're going to do is over the coming months I'm going to show you step by step how to prepare these grandma style fruits and vegetables that we find in the Indian markets and the first one is going to be these little dindora. You may also know them as dendli or dondakaya. In English, they're called ivy gourd, and this is how we prepare them. First, wash and dry your dindura. Top and tail them, and then slice them into quarters lengthways. The skin on these dindura is actually quite thin and easy to eat, so there's no need to scrape the skin or peel them. Just think of them as little courgettes that take just that little bit more time to cook. You can cut them into long strips like this or into rounds, that choice is yours. As this is a dry style curry, the dindura benefit from being cooked a little before we add them to the rest of the masalas. To do this, we'll heat some cooking oil in a large pan and add the sliced dindura. Make sure the pan is over a moderate heat and stir them well. Cook the tindura for about 5 or 6 minutes until they're tender and ever so slightly browned. We want them to retain some of the delicious crunch, so don't overdo it. Now remove the tindura from the pan and drain them in a sieve or bowl lined with kitchen paper. We 
Remove all but two tablespoons of oil from the pan. We don't need this much oil to do the tarka and we certainly don't want all of it in our final dish. Add black mustard seeds to the hot oil. Wait for them to pop, crackle and perform the dance of the mustard seeds. Whenever you're preparing a curry with mustard seeds, it's essential that you allow them to crackle in hot oil first. The way in which mustard seeds release flavour is via the medium of fat, so this step is absolutely imperative. Once the crackling subsides, add whole cumin seeds, asafoetida, and chickpea flour. This chickpea flour is going to toast up beautifully in the oil and give our curry a dry style finish. If you've ever made a bechamel sauce using roux, the concept is very similar. Saute the chickpea flour for 20 to 30 seconds. It'll turn a few shades darker and give off a nutty aroma. Once it does, add the chopped fresh tomatoes and garlic. Cook all of this out for one to two minutes, stirring it all the time. If it feels really dry, then you can add a splash of water. Cue the camera steam. We're now at the point where we can add our dry spices without the risk of burning them. In my plate I have ground turmeric, ground fennel seeds, a blend of ground cumin and coriander seeds, Kashmiri chilli powder for fabulous colour, and of course some salt. I always add ground fennel seeds to dishes that incorporate naturally sweet ingredients like sweet corn, peas or squash. The flavour parallels between the two create magic. Cook all of this out for 1-2 to two minutes, stirring it all the time. If it feels really dry then you can add a splash of water. Next, add cooked sweet corn. I'm using tinned, but you can use fresh or frozen if you prefer those. I just always seem to have a tin of sweet corn in my cupboard. Now cook everything out over a low heat, stirring it often to coax the aromas from the dried spices without burning them. Finally, it's time to add our pre-cooked dindora. Stir them well and heat it through for about 2-3 to three minutes. Garnish with fresh coriander leaves. You can also choose to sprinkle over some desiccated coconut. I'm using the unsweetened kind here and this adds the most delicious finish. Serve this simple weeknight curry with fulka, burrata or rice. I hope you enjoyed this simple but unique vegetable curry. My family absolutely adore it. So next time you see these cute little tindora in the shop, don't be afraid to pick them up and give this a go. If you like my videos and want more Indian vegetarian comfort food recipes, please subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week and if you hit the bell icon, you'll be the first to know whenever a new one is posted. Thanks for watching, see you next time with a new recipe.